we are going to start our semester 4 assignment by reading together Khaled Husseini's The Kite Runner. We all know that Khaled Husseini is basically an Afghan American writer whose place of origin is Afghanistan, even though he is now settled in America. He is a doctor by profession and also a full time writer and social activist. He actually does very startling work for the Afghan poor through his charitable uh, non-government organization or NGO called the Khaled Husseini Foundation, of which I am a member. Uh, Khaled Husseini has written in English. Here he is unlike uh, one of uh, his famous contemporaries, I mean Atik Rahimi. Atik Rahimi is uh, based in France, another Afghan writer who writes both in Dari and in French. And his works have been translated into English. Another writer who is one of Khaled Husseini's younger contemporaries is the novelist Nadia Hashimi. See, in order to understand Khaled Husseini, in order to approach the kite runner, we have to know something about Afghanistan and also about Afghan literature. Now, Afghanistan is a very, very important, strategically important landmass. It's a landlocked country, stashed between, you know, uh, Iran on the one hand and Pakistan on the other, and, and uh, at another side, in another side, uh, there is the Soviet Union, Australia Soviet Union, now Russia. Now, Afghanistan has been a land of a very proud, heterogeneous peoples. The Afghans have, from the very beginning, been a proud, even a world-loving country. Now, to say this, we have to also remember that Afghanistan was not like this from the very beginning. At one time, it was a Hindu citadel. Afterwards, it became a stronghold of the Buddhists. You may have heard about the Bamiyan Buddhas that the Taliban actually destroyed. Enormous statues that have been destroyed by the Taliban. Uh, Afghanistan, as I have pointed out, is a land very important geostrategically because, you know, Hindu Kush mountains, the Khyber Pass, uh, it's on the Silk Route and have been at the, at the crossroads, which is why invaders have come to the Indian subcontinent through Afghanistan. And it has been a country with a checkered past. But demographically speaking, Afghanistan is full of various tribes and various races. There are the Pashtuns, the Uzbeks, the Tajiks, the Hazaras, and so on and so forth. Much of Afghanistan is basically Sunni Muslim. Even though the Hazaras were greatly influenced by Iran, Asia, 
Now, in order to make any sense of Afghan literature or Afghan culture, you have to understand these things. For example, the mixed nature of the Afghan population, so far as its race and caste is concerned, and also <coughs> in so far as its religious sects are concerned. Now, <clears throat> politically speaking, Afghanistan has been has been at the crossroads, as I have already mentioned. It has been annexed and ruled by various powers. At one time, it was a British colony. Then it came under the sway of the Soviets. You know. Soviets had invaded Afghanistan and it led to a resistance movement partly funded by the USA because that was the Cold War period when much of this world was divided into the socialist and the capitalist camp led respectively, by the Soviet Union and the United States of America. Now, when the Soviets came to Afghanistan and formed a puppet government under Najibullah, uh, the Afghan Mujahideens fought them, the Soviets. And so destructive and fierce the uh, resistance was can very easily be ascertained from the fact that the Soviets had to withdraw from Afghanistan. Just as you remember, USA had to withdraw from Vietnam earlier. But, you know, after the Soviet withdrawal, the country was plunged into an irrational bloodbath of civil war. Why? Because much of the population had been militarized. Guns, ammunition, explosives, war implements, all these things had been supplied by America. And the warlords such as Rosid Dostam, Ahmed Shah Masood, Burhanuddin Rabbani, Gulbuddin Hikmatyar, and so on and so forth, fought the Soviets in their own territory, almost independent of any other person. So when the Soviet, the common enemy, the Soviets withdrew, they had their military implements, their guns and ammunition, and there was a large soldiery to feed, which is why they could not remain peaceful. And the result was a serious civil war, which is called the Mujahideen War. In the late 1990s, the Taliban, which was greatly assisted by Osama bin Laden's Al-Qaeda, held sway over Afghanistan, at least to a large extent. And they started a regime of fundamentalist clerics. The independent, fiercely independent, fun-loving, boisterous Afghans had to be cowed down by the Sharia, by 
the ever vigilant predicts as a result fundamental rights were trampled upon women's rights became almost non existent and there was large scale massacre of supposedly an islamic or anti islamic population even though much of afghanistan is almost 100% islamic now after the 2001 bombings of the world trade center the 9/11 there was a war on terror declared by george w bush and participated in by the other western powers along with iraq afghanistan became a fit target for this war on terror allegedly in search of weapons of mass destruction or wmd and ultimately the taliban was defeated they were defeated and people like hamid karzai became uh, dominant and prominent and an era of relative peace and reconstruction began now almost from the 1970s till the 2000 early 2000 for almost 40 years afghanistan was plunged into great disturbance which led to large scale migration and fleeing of the afghan population much of the afghan population fled to pakistan and uh, people were housed in makeshift refugee camp in which uh, even the basic amenities were not provided it was really a humiliating and almost dehumanizing experience for lots of afghans who had at one time been not only independent but also quite well off now afghans fleeing the homeland in turmoil had also traveled to iran and many of them to far away lands the cosmopolitan centers like the united states france or england and so on and so forth which meant that a sizable afghan diaspora became quite a common sight in those places like new york like london like paris and so on since afghanistan had come under the sway of the english english became a very popular language and a medium for literary and artistic expression now when we read khalid hussein we have to keep in mind this fact that khalid hussein was an educated afghan coming from a very well to do and successful family he fled to america and is now settled there as i have already told you he is a doctor by profession and a full time in literature promoter of new voices 
you'll be amazed to know that uh, he has written forwards to many of the other books by his contemporary now kaidrana is a panoramic view of the afghan society from the 1970 till the say 2006 or 2007 now at one time afghanistan was a monarchy under the shah then there was a bloodless coup in which the old monarch was deposed by one of his kinsmen a very simple hawk and opportunist now afterwards when the soviet scheme they tried to the change the afghan language uh, landscape to their taste which was not very pleasant for many of the afghans now there was no peace there was no stability no tranquility for many of the afghans they had to fly from the country or live in abject terrors to be mowed down at will by the rich and the mighty now afghanistan has always been a seat of considerable ancient culture very hospitable very very lively and fun loving the afghans are very traditional by nature so these are facts that we have to retain in our mind in order to understand khaled hussein is the kaitara